Once again, Japan springs into action to make all of your augmented reality dreams come true. The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is planning a more detailed probe into the containment vessels of the three damaged reactors. Tokyo Electric Power Company hopes to learn more details to assist with the retrieval of melted fuel, a key step toward dismantling the plant. The operator plans to fill the containment vessels of reactors 1, 2 and 3 with water. This will help to shield workers from radiation as they attempt to retrieve the fuel. The utility is now checking the vessels for the repair work needed to prevent water leakage. Earlier in April at the number 3 reactor, remote-controlled cameras detected water pooled below a metal scaffold inside an adjoining room. Officials have also confirmed the sound of water flowing in the room. But the exact source is still not clear. As early as May, TEPCO will begin using a special endoscope camera to inspect areas below the scaffold. One area of interest is the section that connects the adjoining room with the containment vessel. The operator believes contaminated water came into the room through this connection. Robots will be used to pinpoint breaches in the number 1 and number 2 reactors where contaminated water has been pouring in. The probe into reactor 1 will focus on checking the bottom of the containment vessel. The reactor 2 probe will center on the donut-shaped suppression chamber at the bottom of the contamin containment vessel. Just a minute! Don't hang up! Hello! You'll have to speak up, I'm wearing a towel. Japanese regulators are concerned about a series of security violations at nuclear plants, so they've urged plant operators to do more to guard their facilities against the threat of terrorism. Complying with laws and regulations is not enough to counter nuclear terrorism. Power companies should also maintain discipline and a proper organizational culture. Officials of the Nuclear Regulation Authority held a meeting with senior managers of the utilities. They stressed the importance of stepping up anti-terrorism measures. The regulators are also looking to strengthen their own safeguards. They'll ask inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency to make sure they're taking adequate measures. They'll also consider a mechanism for background checks on workers at nuclear facilities. One of the security violations took place at the Tokai No. 2 nuclear power plant in central Japan. Security monitors had been switched off. And officials at another facility failed to make copies of visitors' ID documents. Japanese banks and other businesses are joining hands to set up an investment trust. They plan to help build nursing facilities for elderly people. Six companies have announced the establishment of a real estate investment trust, or REIT. They include Shinsei Bank and major construction firm Haseko. Officials say the fund will collect money from investors and initially invest about $980 million to build nursing homes. Japan's population is rapidly aging and its birth rate falling. Housing and nursing facilities are part of the country's necessary infrastructure, but we don't have enough of them. We're hoping to increase the supply of these facilities. The fund plans to list on the Tokyo Stock Exchange as early as this year. Currently, REITs totaling about $76 billion in market value are traded on the Tokyo market. The new REIT would be the first and biggest in Japan to focus on health care facilities for the elderly. A survey by the health ministry shows that 524,000 people were waiting to get into special public nursing homes in the country as of last October. The number is up more than 100,000 from five years The well, ministry panel has warned that Japan's already huge national debt could grow more than six-fold by 2060. An advisory panel to the finance minister wants a radical program of spending cuts and tax rises. The Fiscal System Council report released is the uh, first ever long-term projection of fiscal conditions through 2060. Japan's debt load is already among the heaviest in the industrialized world. The government has set a goal of financing its policy expenditures without issuing a new debt by fiscal 2020. But the panel warns that even if that target of primary balance surplus is met, 
Social welfare, welfare costs will continue to surge as the population ages. It says outstanding debt by central and local governments could balloon to about $80 trillion by fiscal 2060. That would put Japan's ratio of debt to GDP at nearly 400 percent. The panel proposes designating the six years from fiscal 2021 as a period for intense fiscal restructuring. It says holding debt levels to around twice Japan's GDP would mean slashing red ink by about $300 billion during the period. To balance debt and GDP, it says about $450 billion the must Islands be slashed. has filed lawsuits against nine nuclear nations at the International Court in The Hague. It urges those countries to start negotiating for disarmament as required by the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The Pacific chain of islands is suing the five nuclear weapon states, including the United States and Russia. India, Pakistan, North Korea and Israel are also being sued as apparent nuclear armed nations. The island republic was the site of nuclear tests by the United States for over 10 years, from 1946. It was put under US administration in 1947. Islanders are still plagued by the health effects of the nuclear testing. The trial will start at the International Court when the countries named agree the suit has merit. Legal procedures are expected to go ahead with Britain, India and Pakistan as they recognize the International Court has compulsory jurisdiction. Break in the set. So, the Marshall Islands is a country made up of over 1,100 isolated islands with a population of just over 68,000 people. But earlier this week, the tiny Pacific nation made waves by taking on the world's superpowers in an unprecedented international lawsuit filed at The Hague. On Wednesday, the country sued the U.S., Russia, the U.K., France, China, Israel, India, Pakistan, and North Korea over their flagrant violation of international law when it comes to the 1958 Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. According to the lawsuit, the Marshall Islands are claiming that all of these nuclear-armed countries are actually modernizing their warheads instead of disarming them. See, the Marshall Islands has a particular dog in the fight when it comes to ridding the world of these mass-killing machines. Between 1946 and 1958, the U.S. tested 67 nuclear weapons on the islands. And in 1956, the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission designated the islands the most contaminated place on Earth. And although this is no doubt a David v. Goliath battle, this lawsuit sheds a much-needed light on the failure of these countries to adequately reduce their nuclear stockpiles. Because although exact numbers are impossible to know, according to the nuclear non-proliferation group Plowshares Fund, the world still has over 17,000 nuclear weapons, including 8,500 in Russia and 7,700 in the U.S., more than enough to wipe out humanity many times over. Comforting thought, technological insanity. So if you support the Marshall Islands in its quest for a nuclear-free world, then join me. And let's break the set. Police, police have evicted anti-nuclear protesters staging a sit-in on a road in central Taipei. 37 people were injured in the incident. And more than 3,000 protesters gathered on Sunday evening and continued through the night. A citizens group organized a demonstration to call on the government to halt the construction of a nuclear power plant near Taipei. Police began using water cannons to disperse the group before dawn on Monday. They feared the sit-in would disrupt morning traffic. Some the protesters clashed with authorities during the eviction. More than 90 percent of the work on Taiwan's fourth nuclear plant is complete, but construction was suspended last year due to public concerns over safety. Many residents started to worry about atomic energy after the accident three years ago at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear facility. President Ma ying announced on Sunday that his government would freeze construction on the plant. He plans to hold a referendum to ask voters whether or not a building work should go ahead. But analysts say it may be difficult to hold a referendum before the presidential election scheduled for 2016. President Barack Obama arrived in Japan today for the first part of his week-long Asia trip. And apparently he came to Tokyo with an appetite for none other than sushi. The president joined Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe for dinner at a tiny restaurant that's popular for hosting some of the best Japanese food in the world. Of course, President Obama isn't the only American who has had his fair share of sushi cuisine. 
The U.S. sushi industry has already topped $2 billion, and the seafood industry even more. But how much of what we eat here in the U.S. is actually legal? About 90% of U.S. seafood is imported, and according to a new study, as much as a third of that is illegally caught. This kind of activity is called pirate fishing. According to the study, up to 40% of tuna imported to the U.S. from Thailand is illegal. Additionally, 45% of pollock and 70% of salmon imports from China are illegal. Earlier studies have shown that illegal and unreported fishing accounts for up to 31% of the world's catch. But this study is the first to examine how much of it slips past the better inspected ports of the United States. The U.S., which imports 14% of the global total, is not required to ask for documentation showing a bounty's origin. But many environmentalists have suggested that the U.S. exhibit tighter control on its inspection. The whaling fleet has set sail from a port in Miyagi Prefecture for an expedition along Japan's northeastern coast. The voyage comes only weeks after the International Court of Justice ordered that part of the program be suspended. By taking one step at a time, we want to ensure the survival of traditional whaling. That's our biggest mission. Four ships left the port of Ayukawa in the city of Ishinomaki after a ceremony attended by about 100 people. The fleet operators say they aim to catch 51 minke whales instead of the usual 60. The whalers caught one minke whale on Saturday. They say they will examine the animal's stomach contents. The expedition will continue until early June. Last month, the International Court of Justice ordered Japan to suspend its whaling program in the Antarctic Ocean. The court said it did not qualify as scientific research. However, the decision did not cover the Northwest Pacific Ocean. North Korea's leaders have lashed out over talks last week between U.S. President Barack Obama and South Korean President Park geun Defense officials in Pyongyang warned that they may take measures more threatening than a nuclear test. Members of North Korea's National Defense Commission issued a statement condemning Obama and Park for discussing nuclear issues. They say they won't abandon their nuclear arsenal just because the U.S. tells them to. They say they need to maintain and upgrade their nuclear weapons until the U.S. stops its nuclear threats. Analysts at Johns Hopkins University in the United States said last week that satellite images show an increase in activity around a nuclear test site. They say workers appear to be moving vehicles and materials near the entrances of two test tunnels. Today was anything but routine for several branches of law enforcement gathering at the remote Nevada National Security Test Site for radioactive training drills. As News 3's Vicky Gonzalez reports, they are using remnants of nuclear weapons testing that took place at that location dating back to the 50s to protect the public from modern threats undetectable to the naked eye. Do you hear that? Breaking the quiet southern Nevada sunrise? This bird is among a flock that's a different pedigree of law enforcement, equipped to look beyond the bright lights and vibrant energy Las Vegas generates. This is pretty much the, the world class of, uh, of the uh, radiation detection from the air. Alan Remick is from the National Nuclear Security Administration. This helicopter is one of two aircrafts from the remote sensing laboratory. Nellis Air Force Base, along with our nation's capital, are the only testing sites in the country. It's very sensitive to equipment. It, it detects radiation over a large area. Now, what's unique about this helicopter are these radiation monitoring pods capable of detecting radioactive sources anywhere from 150 to 1,500 feet off the ground. You know, everybody thinks mushroom cloud. That's the beauty of the equipment that we have now. We can find small amounts that somebody could be putting together uh, and hopefully stop it prior to something happening. Doug Huffmaster is with Las Vegas Metro. They work cohesively with Nellis Air Force Base, outfitted with their own equipment to monitor Las Vegas's most memorable and vulnerable moments. Well, 
Yeah, everybody knows about uh, Las Vegas and New Year's Eve. That's our biggest uh, mission because there's 300,000 people on the Strip. The unique challenge itself is, is Las Vegas is a target every day. Now, this is the first of three days of training, and it is unprecedented. This is the only place in the country where something like this can take place, and it's not a simulation. These aircraft will be looking for controlled, low-level radioactive material. At Desert Rock Airport in Mercury, Vicki Gonzalez, News 3. The U.S. Army, Customs and Border Protection, and Los Angeles County Sheriffs also joined in on today's training. By completing this video, you have proven you are capable of filming, producing, and editing your own. We expect one video from you by the end of next week.